For businesses, this globalization process has produced many opportunities. Firms can expand their revenues by selling around the world and or reduce their costs by producing in nations where key inputs, including labor, are cheap. The global expansion of enterprises has been facilitated by generally favorable political and economic trends. As globalization unfolds, it is transforming industries and creating anxiety among those who believe their jobs were protected from foreign competition. Globalization refers to the move toward a more integrated and interdependent world economy in two areas. What are they? Over the past 50 years, due to falling cross-border trade and investment barriers, companies are finding it easier to sell their products and services globally. The rise of the Internet has further increased the access to international markets as a customer in the U.S. can order a product made in France, Germany, Kenya, etc. simply by using one of many different search engines. The most interesting thing, any company, regardless of size, can facilitate and benefit from the globalization of markets. In other words, globalization is the merging of historically distinct and separate national markets into one huge global marketplace. Examples would include well-known names like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Ikea, Starbucks, and Apple. The globalization of production focuses on three areas. First, sourcing of goods and services from locations around the globe to take advantage of national differences in the cost and quality of factors of production like labor, energy, land, and capital. Number two, a lower overall cost structure. And number three, improve the quality or functionality of the product to compete more effectively. Initially, early outsourcing of production was primarily for manufacturing companies. Today, modern communications technology allows companies to outsource services like call centers, invoice processing, etc. However, even today, despite all of the achievements in the globalization of market and production, impediments to globalization remain, like formal and informal trade barriers, barriers to foreign direct investment, transportation cost, economic and political risk, and the managerial challenge. To facilitate the development of free trade of goods, services, and financial markets, Global institutions come into existence to assist in the management, regulation, and policing of the global marketplace. This has been accomplished through the establishment of multinational treaties to govern the global business system. Here are some of the more well-known, influential global institutions. The World Trade Organization. They are charged with policing the world trading system and to ensure nations adhere to the rules established in WTO treaties. It was preceded by GATT, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. Today, the WTO covers over 160 countries and 98% of the world trade. International Monetary Fund, better known as the IMF, was established to promote order in the global monetary system. Most importantly, it is viewed as the lender of last resort for countries that are in economic disarray, like Argentina, Kenya, and many others. Often, the lending to these troubled countries come with some heavy restrictions on fiscal policies that cause economic hardship on the country's population. The World Bank promotes economic development by providing loans and grants to the governments of low- and middle-income countries for the purpose of pursuing capital projects. It comprises of two institutions, the International Bank of Reconstruction and Development, better known as the IBRD, and the International Development Association, IDA. It was created during the final days of World War II to help in the reconstruction of a devastated world global economy from the war. The United Nations came into existence following World War II and today has over 190 member countries. 
His focus is on attempting to maintain international peace and security and encouraging non-confrontational relations among nations and to promote respect for human rights. The Group of 20, better known as G20, was founded in 1999 with the aim to discuss policy pertaining to the promotion of international financial stability. Membership of the G20 consists of 19 individual countries plus the European Union. The EU is represented by the European Commission and by the European Central Bank. Collectively, the G20 economies account for around 90% of the gross world product and 80% of the world trade, or if excluding EU interest trade, 75%. Two-thirds of the world population and approximately half of the world land mass. All of these organizations are important today, as they have been instrumental in driving all economies toward more openness in terms of economic activity. So what are those drivers that are driving globalization? There are declining trade and investment barriers in two key areas. International trade is when a firm exports goods or services to consumers in another country. Foreign direct investment, when a firm invests resources in business activities outside its home country. During 1920s and 1930s, many nations put up barriers to international trade to protect domestic industries. However, following World War II, advanced Western countries reduced trade barriers through multilateral agreements like GATT, Uruguay Round, and WTO. Since World War II, there have been major advances in communications, information processing, and transportation. Just look at how the cellular industry over the last 20 years has morphed into the wireless industry. The development of faster and faster more capacity microprocessors has led to this rapid change in which we communicate. On top of that, we now have the World Wide Web, known as the Internet. The power of knowledge is at the tip of one's finger. There are so many other technological changes as well, but there is one that has really opened up the globalization of markets, containerization. Due to the falling of barriers for the flow of goods, services, and capital, companies have determined the relocation of production facilities have resulted in one, lower transportation cost, and two, geographically dispersed production system becomes more economical, and three, allows firms to better respond to customer demands. The final driver of globalization is the globalization of markets due to one, low-cost communication networks help create electronic global marketplace. Two, low-cost transportation makes it economical to ship products around the world. Three, a reduction in cultural distance. And four, a convergence of customer or consumer taste and preferences. Many experts believe Globalization is promoting greater prosperity in the global economy, more jobs, and lower prices for goods and services. Others feel that globalization is not beneficial, resulting in a debate, is globalization a net positive for the global economy, or is it not? However, not everyone is in agreement with the globalization of the world economy. For example, Whenever there is a G20 meeting, there will always be demonstrations against those countries for a variety of reasons. Many believe the following about globalization. The following barriers destroy manufacturing jobs in wealthy economies like the U.S. Western Europe. Service activities increasingly outsourced to nations with lower labor costs. Supporters say benefits outweigh the cost. Outsourcing allows a company to reduce its cost structure, and as a result, it can reduce prices or increase its profitability. However, there are several studies showing the gap between the poorest and the richest segments of the society has widened. In fact, for most countries, real income levels have increased for all, 
including the porous segment. Through the technological advancements being made in the production process, many advanced economies report a shortage of highly skilled workers and an excess of unskilled workers. The lack of regulations in less developed countries has hampered economic growth as companies are reluctant to invest significant sums of money to develop production facilities and to develop a social network without some degree of legal protection. As governments increase in environmental regulations, the cost of manufacturing increases as well. However, many governments are moving toward stricter environmental regulations in order to improve the quality of life, air, and water for its populace. Many critics worry economic power is shifting away from national governments and toward a supranational organization such as the WTO, the EU, or the UN. However, supporters argue that the power of these organizations is limited to what nation states collectively agree to grant. Critics argue the gap between rich and poor has gotten wider and the benefits of globalization have not been shared equally. While there is some truth in that perspective, one must realize that many of the world's poorest nations are under totalitarian regimes. They suffer from endemic corruption, have few property rights, are involved in war, and are burdened by high debt. In order to reduce or eliminate global poverty, action has to be taken to allow citizens to live and work in a free society. In moving into the global business arena, one must realize the following. Managing international business differs from managing a purely domestic business. International business must vary its practices country by country. International business issues are greater in their complexity. And finally, there is a need to understand the rules governing international trade and investment. The globalization of world economies is happening at a faster rate each and every day. Many countries continue to pass legislation to hinder the free flow of goods, services, and capital with the stated intent of protecting their economies and people. While the implementation of some regulation could prove to be useful, the majority of countries would greatly benefit with freer, less restrictive policies in order to increase the globalization of their local markets. <music>